humans, what have you learned? Till I get up, time is barely on our side. I don't wanna waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us, and love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah, no, I don't wanna waste what's left. And on and on we'll go through the wastelands, through the highways, to my shadow. Turns the sun rays and on and on we'll go through the wastelands, through the highways, and on and on we'll go.
Okay, okay, okay. We're finally uh, into the first match of the SLE uh, of this season, and we today have Eternal Blizzard versus Scrubs, since no teams have um, games <laughs> this split still. We really don't know what to expect, but we know that the Eternal Blizzard was really strong last one, so uh, we have this. Uh, a little bit bias here going into these games. I mean, I'm looking at these rosters right now, and we have like actually quite interesting OPGs as well. Uh, we have here quite a, a lot of uh, let's let's see let's see let's see Israel uh, and Camille gaming over here with high win rates on the Blizzard side. Uh, probably gonna see those two picks coming out as well. Ooh, I see a Nyla here as well with 66% win rate. Quite cool. Uh, on the Grub side, we see uh, quite a bit of fresh gaming from the HMA. H yeah, come on. HDM. I just can't spell for the life of me. Um, but yeah, uh, we see Smolder and some basic Java gaming as well. I mean, those are generic picks, but. I don't mind genetic picks as long as it's just well played. 
well done. And soon enough, we'll see what the players have been cooking up. So we are into the draft right now. We see the bands coming out. It's Syndra Six and Ivan into uh, into Smolder, Shivana, and Varus, which is, I mean, not surprising to say, but certainly valuable bands. Props have big Sejani and now Eternal Blizzard answers with Misfortune over here. Now, from personal experience on solo queue, uh, Misfortune is quite nasty right now, so leaving that open to be picked is maybe a mistake. We'll see soon enough, but I have hopes that Grubs has a plan and just can counter that. Also, the brand lock here is interesting. It's just if this goes bot lane, I mean it is flex pick still, but if it goes uh, bot lane, it's in like immense power. But when it goes to jungle, it just fast clears and just needs to get those ashes as soon as possible. Here's the problem lock from Grab side. I mean it's just the staple pick against misfortune, which I like it. I think it's good. And honestly, if Krabs can continue a Freljord pick here, then they have just absolute banging of a time. Never mind, it's Jin coming out here. Hasn't been locked yet, but soon enough it might just be. And that is indeed a Jin lock. Now, Jin has been played quite a bit recently. Not exactly sure about the main build path that usually is. I think it's like RFC and uh, Static, but, you know, uh, if it works, it works. Now, Eternal Blizzard answering with Gorky over here, quite a safe pick on the mid lane, I suppose, but the MF brand Gorky is just like speaking mid range to me in all the right volumes. Now we see a Klet ban. From the tunnel side, Poppy ban against it. Oh, I've been joined by another fellow over here. Hello, I'm. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's definitely planned that I'm here uh, joining you in this call today. <laughs> Has been all along. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, anyway, uh, Mordekaiser and Rakan has been banned from either side, and now it is up to Eternal Blizzard to make their. Uh, one last blind pick. What do you think I mean, about this, Gloomy? I mean, seeing a Mordekaiser ban, uh, it could take, they could maybe try to go for just a cheeky uh, tank blind pick here on 4 already and go for like a support counter pick. Um, we, because like, uh, Mordekaiser does counter quite hard, but it looks like it is going to be either a Mumu jungle or a Mumu support with the brand jungle, both can be qu uh, quite soft around, which makes the Mordekaiser ban a bit weird to me because Morde only release an issue if you play a tank and since you have the R5 here for EP, it's a bit weird. Okay, okay. Now Zoe being hovered here, um, quite a bit of peel I, I suggest coming from Amumu. I mean Amumu is just disgusting in general I feel, it's the... Uh, <clears throat> what is the thing called? The burning item, come on, I'm blanking. Help me out. Wait, sorry, what, what, what item called again? I'm sorry, I'm, I need to set up everything right now real quick. I'm just still... <laughs> yeah, the item. God, I'm blanking so hard. I need chat to help me out. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, Landry's, yeah, finally. Uh, Landry's is just making Amumu so strong right now. He can pretty much solo anyone in the game and when he completes that item. And now the Renekton is being hovered as well and locked here. Interesting enough, it's like this poke comp with a lot of engage. There's just a bit of mixed bag here, but maybe Grabs have a, as a plan. And now the blind pick into the Necton. What's it gonna be? Uh, I mean the counter pick, I, the blind pick. Can't, yeah, uh, yeah, no, the blind pick into the Necton. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the... sure. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited to see if we're gonna see something spicy. Oh yeah, the spicy counter pick Orin. We love to see it R5 on, like it's written in the legends. Picking on into Braum, 
oh, obviously always the best play. <laughs> uh, I just noticed. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh god, no. There's no way, right? Uh, they, they had to miss that one. I mean, no. uh, I mean, they have a lot of ways to bait out the Braum shield, right? They can just uh, already use the the, uh, the old of the misfortune, which can like bait it out, or maybe they don't want to use the on horn to bait out the Braum shield, so they can use then use the misfortune. Ult. They have a lot of layering. They have a lot of a lot of abilities need to be blocked by this Braum, and if uh, EB times it quite well here, they can like okay. Great, you block one of our abilities. We still have the on horn. We still have the brand ultimate. We still have the Amumu Q. Um, there's so much uh, right uh, on the side of EB that Brom wants to block. So if they time it well, it is fine that they pick on into Brom. But the question is, can EB time it well? Yeah, and it has to be like, you know, Eternal Prison can't be caught by surprise if they want to do this, because yeah. unless they get just picked off, you know, it's just one tool gone off and it's gonna be a disastrous fight ahead of them okay what do we think here i mean i like the draft from eternal like as general it's just not into that specific crops comp but then again crops don't have that much of the constant dps i guess chin can apply quite some quite some damage but the rest of um, them always so just picks off hmm. i'm genuinely quite confused by the graphs because i feel like this isn't a draft this is solo queue um <laughs> it's just i mean genuinely uh, i i'm not too sure about like zoe corky matcher for example i guess i can't imagine being all that well for zoe but maybe they have something cooking that that we don't know of here quite yet but like outside of the gin there isn't really a lot of synergy with the zoe combined uh, I don't think Jin so we together are quite enough uh, poke damage uh, in itself. Sejani does synergize well with the Renekton here, which is good. Like Sejani Renekton, very strong combo if you want to go for like top dives. If you want to make these aggressive uh, 2v2 plays, 3v3 plays in the upper half of the map. But on the other hand, like I, I would have loved to see something a bit more melee aggressive here for Grabus in mid lane, for example, like an Akali. I think Akali would have been amazing. Mm hmm. Also, synergizes very, very well with the Sejuani. Um, but in general, I'm, I, I feel like Grubbers themselves don't really know what they wanted when they approached this draft. They just uh, went like, okay, I feel, um, I have a feeling this champ is good. They didn't really like think all too much about it. While on the other hand, we have EB, which is like, okay, uh, we just go broken champs. Misfortune, incredible in the meta. Brand, as much as he got nerfed a few times, is still quite good, uh, and especially. Um, Jonathan Isaac, as far as I am aware, is a very good brand player. Paired with the Corky, Corky is still probably the number one mid lane at the moment with all the Shisananas coming in, big staple. Amumu, uh, very good synergy with the Misfortune because you, um, the curse of the sad mummy into the bullet, bullet time, bullet rain, I think it's called the Misfortune. It's just big layering of all the olds. EB clearly shows, okay, we want to team fight, we want to big wombo combo, and if it's about team fights, Grabbers is no way to contest it, but I also don't think that the poke of the Grabbers with the Jin and Zoe is strong enough to um, make sure EB can't enter the objective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, objective fights are going to be terrible for the Grabs here. Uh, their only hope right now is to just make some amazing engage, like to a straggling enemy, right? It's just that you have Sejuanial Jin W into Zoe pop. And <clears throat> if you want to like go it that way, then the Renekton and Braum and just odd ones out. Maybe they can make it work. That's your hope. I mean, I obviously hope for close games. I hope nobody gets run down. But we, uh, everybody here knows, uh, Jonathan Isaac and EB is washed, so not sure if EB can win. <laughs> <laughs> surely, 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 surely. <laughs> oh, that's good. <clears throat> I mean, the th um... Grubs surely want to play early game topside, right? They have Renekton over there, they have Sejani just gonna pop anyone who is just walks the way. Um, but maybe Orin can win standard, and if he does, then Eternal Blizzard has insane amount of scaling from the bot side. And yeah. it's just gonna be a one-sided stomp that way. No, I agree with you. If, if, if the Grubbers are, are not able to dive the on, like... Uh two three times and actually kill him and make sure the on is completely out and the renekton is like so strong that he runs the enemies down it's going to be really really hard for the grabbers but
but if the Grabbers do manage to accelerate this Renekton extremely, uh, like, quite strongly, we see, for example, in, like, the LPL, I know, LPL, SLE, around the same skill level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. But the Renekton ca can be very oppressive, very strong, and um, I'm, the only thing I would be worried in that case is, can the Renekton properly approach the carries of EB? Because there is an Amumu, there is still the Orn, there's a lot of peeling for this misfortune and the Corki. Yeah, I'm still afraid, like, even if Orn does fall behind, it's still Orn. <laughs> like, stuff is gonna go down either way. Um, so it's kind of interesting on this side. The question is, can anyone actually be caught on the enemy, um, on the Eternal Blizzard side? Because you have this Corki who just can bail out every single time. Friend and MF don't even walk close. Maybe a Mumu is the only one who can be caught like this. Yeah, but honestly speaking, if you like catch the Mumu, he just runs to his own camps and kills the Raptors. Um... <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. But, but it's, it's really hard. It's kind of slippery. Yeah. Like, a Mumu is a bit like a Spider Man, like a tanky one. A tanky Spider Man? Tank, like when in the movie, Spider Man had like the, the suit made out of metal, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. actually, yeah, yeah. armor. <laughs> Imagine though, just we watch like 20 minutes of a game, I'm almost just escaping death every single time. Yes. That would be a banger and a half. Just make a montage out of it. Uh, I, I, that, that would be banger. But, um, I feel like Amumu is gonna die at least four times. Okay. Make it five. Yeah. I mean, it has to, right? It's like Hillisang support coming in hot. Yeah, I mean, to be, to be fair, I also feel like if a Mumu support doesn't die like four times, uh, he is yeah. doing something wrong and he is griefing. <laughs> if but... enemy recalls, ignite. Just, you're not going back today. <laughs> <laughs> we want the full on um, Hilo Sang Schizo gameplay. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's like a really awesome thing to watch. No, Nobody wants to watch just like uh, both bot layers just clearing waves on each other. Yeah. Um... By the way, on Jin builds, the, the most build like most used items on Jin right now, I believe, are static and RFC. That build, I swear, does zero damage. Um, I I also feel like it. It always looks useless, but then I saw Hansama do it, and all of a sudden it did damage. Yeah, but that's Hansama. It, the damage is different with us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you look like a K-pop star, you get bonus damage. Yeah, you know the picture where it's a, it's like uh, Yasuo's static shield does like, uh, in Challenger, like 500 damage more than in Bronze. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, but we are in the game. Uh, no, we're not. Shit. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna bail out. I mean... Uh, yeah. any... Some anyway. technical difficulties over here, so instead you can see our beautiful faces. Never okay, mind. Okay, now we're back. Easy. Uh, Amumu almost getting caught right off the bat here. Uh, Brom, Brom didn't quite land, and he gets away safely now. Anything anything interesting going on with runes, Summers? No? I mean, I mean, I see the, the Conqueror brand. I'm not sure if that is common, but I think it is. This fight. Every uh, single time. Oh, okay, right, right, right. Okay, is he... Yeah, I mean, everything else seems about normal. I mean, I think I would have preferred the spellbook on the Zoe here this game. Um, also, uh, maybe Conqueror hmm? on Renekton, no? Instead of PTA against Orn. I mean, I think if you want to go for the early dives uh, that you kind of need to do, uh, I think the early damage boost that you can get from the PTA can help you snowball. Mm -hmm. But it does put kind of a timer onto the Renekton, like onto this game. If the Grabbers don't finish by like minute 20, 25, it is going to be quite a roughy. Yeah. I feel like... Anyway, yeah. we see uh, both just uh, starting their reds. So, as expected, Sejuani is, in fact, uh, going topside. And we see Brand also clearing from... from Raptors to Krogs. Okay, interesting. Just doing the AoE camps first. Yeah, I feel, what do we see on bot lane? I feel like there isn't going to be anything like big going to happen in the early game. I think it's just going to be like, yeah, shoving waste around, uh, waiting till something happens. Branch just really wants to clear the jungle. If something happens, this is going to be out of the Sejuani trying to force something after the first full clear. Like going full clear, if we see she is going top, 
uh, like you already mentioned, and then just try to do something against this on. Other than this, I think it's just going to be like very, very passive overall. I, I don't think any lane really has that much kill pressure in itself alone before like the low six, before the, the first items kind of start to roll in. So I, I think mean, yeah, gonna... makes sense. Um, honestly, like, especially since Brand is not the kind of jungler who, you know, makes flashy plays. Uh, if Sejuani also doesn't find anything on Orn, then yeah, we're just in for a farm fest for the first, like, 10 minutes or so. Let's go. That's the first game of the SLE split. That's what we want to see. Farming. <laughs> absolutely. Just absolutely quality gaming over here. We're just taking minions after minions after minions. Plus 20, plus 21. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Every but we see a lot of minions being missed though. So you know, it is harder than it looks like. I no no no. It's it's making the enemy like overconfident because you sh you seem like you oh. can't farm, and then we just take tower damage to just make it even <laughs> more close. <laughs> I mean, I kind it's of all the, it's all in the plans. Like Sejuani is coming. Okay, he knows his stuff. <laughs> Don't doubt. I, 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 I'm kind of worried that the Renekton is just gonna die to set Johnny Gang's top now. No, 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 that would never happen. Also, Gorky oh. out of mana here, so maybe Zoe just... I mean, uh, Blaze goes just in, but can't really finish Gorky off because, you know, HP. And oh. <laughs> and now, so Blaze is in the, in the runs because he just has to get away from Isaac. But uh, Velvagen is just making his way there as well. Can't stun... Uh, Isaac here, Blaze does live. The healing potion is enough, but it's getting really close in the top lane. Benjamin taking the first blood over here. That is not the way you want the top lane to go. He's still going. <laughs> no. Okay. Isaac, make sure Blaze doesn't, Blaze doesn't play this game, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how mid lane feels every game in the SLE, I tell you that much. If China uh, doesn't like you, you're playing good. the game. It's mental warfare. <laughs> But beautiful place, like overall. Jonathan Isaac played it quite well, trying to go to the kill onto the place. Maybe overgreeded it a little bit. Uh, Valvagen was there just in time to save his mid laner. On the other hand, the one thing that can't happen for Gravis kind of happened with the Renekton dying against Yawn, which is like kind of the one win condition this game, is the Renekton. Yeah, I, uh... it's just rough time coming in. I mean, I'm not maybe the biggest fan of the Bramble West buy here, but I do get it. Um, I would personally go Warden's Mail. Just overall does better. Yeah, I, I, I can, can't really say much to it. Uh, I don't know a lot about like what tanks should do. Well, I'm, I'm a weak side top laner, so, you know. Oh, I see. I, I, I judge every single second what Oren buys. My, my condolences. Mm. <laughs> what do you mean? It's fun. Oh yeah, you can imagine. Sending it's a fist your... fight on an island, come on. <laughs> yeah, sometimes uh, enemy jungle comes, but you will never be there. Sounds no, very no, no, no. <laughs> Jungler is a myth. Okay, but now we see Blaze maybe getting the damage and no... Wait, what? Well, excuse me, Benjamin? Uh, Hondrok is just in a pickle right now, doesn't even have ultimate, and the knockup is coming in, but the... he gets level 6 and he can stun it, and he turns the tables. Benjamin... Oh, we don't talk about it. It's just no. Nah, it, it, there, there was an attempt, okay. I wanted, was I, wanted, an attempt. I wanted to place Glazer as the weak side king of the SLE, but god damn it, that was <laughs> not um, that was uh, the jester of the weak side. God damn. But I mean, it was kind of unfortunate as well because, like you know, the minion hit right as he was about to dive, but you had to also know that it was coming. Like there was there was no way he was not gonna hit six from that wave. Yeah. Uh, it's just over oh, Alice here on the side of Benjamin. It was like an, a nice idea, it was like a nice start, but oh, wait, I'm gonna give it to you. Okay, Blaze getting a little bit caught here. Does hit the sleep on Isaac, but that is nearly not enough because Mr. Shrekman is coming to get that uh, 300 gold off of Blaze. Yeah, beautiful punish here from Jonathan Isaac. He knows Blaze doesn't have to flash. He did just force the flash out of Blaze a few minutes ago. Like a few minutes, like, ah, uh, yeah, one, two minutes ago. And oh, no, yeah. And Jonathan Isaac instantly punishes it, runs mid lane again, it's like, okay, we saw Sejuani is on the grubbers. She did the grubs right now, I c if I run mid lane right now, Blaze being a little bit, uh, stepping up a little bit too forward without knowing where Jonathan Isaac is, just instantly get him punished, which is like, 
it killed for Jonathan Isaac. And uh, also now leads to the Hex Drinker for the Corky, which is now making the lane so, so safe for him. And this Corky is just gonna scale freely in the, into the lake game now, unless the Sejuani can, uh, Sejuani and the Braum here can uh, b -b 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 save it somehow. I wanted to say yeah, it worked, but I forgot It's still gonna be difficult because, you know, Corky does have still W up if just he doesn't use it randomly. I mean, Elred still hasn't died, which is something. Like, we, we expected Amumu to do something here, but we have just gotten a safe farming lane. <laughs> that is Amumu, that is... Uh... You know, I wanted to make like a joke with somehow enchant Amumu, but I couldn't find the word, and now I'm just standing here awkwardly. But... You'll make it there. Uh, some Someday, someday. <laughs> you know, maybe like at minute 25 of the game, I'm just suddenly yeah, yeah. gonna be like, Oh my god! Remember this one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Okay, Isaac is not going to take up that opportunity, but Benjamin, I feel, is not satisfied and still wants to get a little bit of action going here. What can we see from this? I mean, nothing interesting in build side. Maybe the Eclipse Renekton is a bit weird, but okay. You can go that. Wait, pickaxe from Jin. Huh? Wait, oh. Okay, with the action on the top lane, Benjamin just using the ult, missing completely, but Isaac is here to cover that up. Does uh, Hunt Hodge get, just get anyone out of this exchange? No, he oh. dies first. Uh, Whale Vision is just here to get, pick something up, but he just lacks damage to get things done, and he will fall to Orn as well. Benjamin takes up this kill. Isaac also gets another 300 gold, and this is spelling disaster for Grubs. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it started with like a really nice uh, pick onto the Renekton. It kind of the, the Arnold. Look at the replay, and it's again the same spot of missing the ult completely. <laughs> the play here was just that, but you know, it's just as a Renekton here, you can't do much. The Orn has 500,000 armor, and it's just it's doomed from the beginning. The good thing is, Wallachin saw, okay, Benjamin ulted, and as a, like, in at the end brother, I have to save you, and I gotta agree with even harder than this Arnold, just run in to the 1v2. Got it, um, how is it, fucking burn item called again? Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, not, no, 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 the, the one that Sejuani actually had, right now, in the inventory. The Bami Cinder, yeah, Sejuani had the Bami Cinder, and with the confidence of the world, thought she can beat the Orn and the Brand. So, yeah. that was maybe a bit delusional, but it's alright, um, we love Maybe you know something we don't, queen. but, you know, it turned out differently. <laughs> yeah, he hacked himself into the Matrix and saw the perfect play, how we can turn this play into the right play, you know? Okay, but Elrat is here, up to no good, just making his way onto the jungle, perhaps. Doesn't see into that bush, walking into uh, both Braum and Jeju here. But Isaac is here to follow that up. The Isaac has ultimate now going and it pops. Do, we, do they get enough damage to just finish everyone off without, without casualties? No, Elrat goes down here. It's still one for one as well, which just dies. And what is going on now? Honjuk does a shit ton of damage as Isaac has to flee for his life. He flashes out. But gets away still safely. They have no uh, escape. But Blaze is here hitting that sleep. 5,000. Just IQ making that calculations here. And the fight is still going. Benjamin has had not enough. He will avenge his dead teammates over here. Does he have enough damage to make the Frenectum pay? Ultimate comes out. Does Brom have shield? It isn't stopped. But Benjamin still goes down, I believe. No way. And the flash is not enough to make a difference. And HM power lives through this all. What a fiesta Mexicana. It, it started with like Elred, you know, stepping into Isn't the that this uh... queen fight, by the way. Like, oh, wait, basically, the fight doesn't end it. Oh my god. <laughs> and he <laughs> gets another Q off. Oh boy. To say it just does an ultimate, but it's all for nothing. And did you waste quite a bit of time over there? Ah. Go on. So. Is the game, can I finally talk? Is the fight over? It is, okay. <laughs> Zada with like a nice pick onto Elred who, who just went forward and then decided to not click ultimate for like 
At, he had like three seconds time to just press the ultimate and then he got perma cc and at, at, at the point where he finally wasn't cc anymore it was a bit too late there was already so much damage that alred just died when he tried to block the zoe q from um uh, to protect his sleeping brand here and after that it was just beautifully punished actually by the grabbers um uh eternal blizzard stepping up a little bit too much wanting a little bit too much being greedy and uh grabbers beautifully punishing uh, everything there i think if he still got the grabs there at the end now but uh, it was still a lot of gold back into the back of the grabbers but i will have to interrupt okay elvet is just making another uh this is the bandage here making the enemy stop but not quite enough they don't still have the damage to just burst through the enemy lines and this skirmish is Pretty much over, as uh, Sejuani can't really enter the pit anymore, but maybe Blaze has something in store that we just are missing out. And Elrond does the flash ult play. They still get no one. Isaac's ult is also out. Est Stella just has a nice ultimate uh, range here, but not enough to bait out the dragon pull here. Interesting enough. Okay, Blaze, I see you. The sleep comes in. Does he get the jump? No, Elred just thanks the damage, and that is it for this dragon. This fight uh, could have been so much differently, but Wallajin hit a beautiful ultimate here onto Rain D. Uh, Rain D uh, used his W to go forward aggressively, but Wallajin instantly punishing it by throwing his ultimate on him. Rain D being thermal CC'd, then getting like followed up with the Jin W across um, the entire map, and with Corky not being able to move. Uh, Grabbers were able to at least go out safely, so nobody really died here. Still a Drake here for Eternal Blizzard, which will be the second one. And the Mountain Drake can be quite annoying for the Zoe, who wants to burst away the enemies. Mountain Drake, obviously giving you more resistances, can be a bit of a nuisance here, that, especially sy synergizing very well with the Tax Drinker. Um, but we're gonna... Okay, wait, wait, please. Getting that sleep in. Ultimate coming in hot. No? None. Ah, oh, <laughs> here, here you go. The X Drinker worked. <laughs> I think Rain D could have went here for the kill. Ah, uh, no, it's just Morgan just bailed out. Okay, but Elvat is on the loose. Oh, <laughs> he's going for the four deaths. <laughs> come on, come on. Uh, no, uh, they oh. don't know. They just uh, don't know. Wait, wait, is, isn't wait, place I, I don't is know. the place griefing? Why is he in the backing? What is this? Wait, what? Um, all right. Grabbers I mean, just know more than we do. Yeah. I mean, I mean, HM is just, just waiting his time here, trying to get maybe onto the reindeer here, but oh, oh. nothing will happen. Just say just, they just waltz in and they get this flank off, and Eldred finally connects another bandage. And we here see Brom escapes quite narrowly, but Blaze is in trouble. There is no escape for him. Isaac picks up power here, and they are just two down from not backing off, essentially. I mean, Grabbers were just waiting for Rain D to be greedy and step forward, but um, Eternal Blizzard, like, smelling that something was fishy there, moved down, saw, oh, there's a Brom in the trial brush, and the Brom and the Zoe being low with uh, not a lot of mana, which is free kills, free food, and a free tower, which now is a 3k gold lead for the side of Eternal Blizzard. Yeah, I mean, they also have two dragons, so this game is not looking too great for Grabs here. But maybe, maybe they have a turning ground, and now Honjax just goes in. Benjamin does get the damage with the Jin help over here. They do manage to finish him off, and that is 300 valuable gold right now into their pockets. Yeah, and the uh, tower shot down here on the top tower. But that is quite a lot of gold, making it down to only a 2k gold deficit. Which is still a deficit, but, you know, the last deficit is good deficit, I would say. As long the as only... they're just coming back, it's good. Yeah, exactly. But the only problem that Gravis is going to have here is that Eternal Blizzard completely outscales them. So, um, and being down here in the rather early slash mid game can be a little bit of an okay, issue. Okay, they're getting snared, and, but just they, they lack it so much. <laughs> Elrath <laughs> is like, okay, I get hit by 100 damage. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but now the Renekton's coming in. The oh. stuns have been laid out. Elred is in trouble. He goes down. Yeah, I mean, Hondok just showed up and it's, it, it, that was the story. Yeah, I mean, Elred on his way to the four kills. 
uh, that uh, we predicted he listened to cars, he wants to help us out, but no. Uh, all flame aside, beautiful flicky body grab us, so, okay. Elred, off position, doesn't have flash, let's kill him. Nice side lane play on the side throw from Randy, getting the top tower. Um, so it's just kind of clean plays on both sides here, with Elred making a little bit of a not all too clean play here, but beautifully punished by the grabbers and beautiful, beautifully re reacted by Rain D to still get Ooh. something out of Origin just does miss the ultimate. Nothing you can do about that one. And Elred finds a way to place to get him to, to stand still for two seconds and place goes down again. Yeah. Oh, wait. It's not over nah. yet, maybe? No. Maybe? It's... Maybe? Depends how greedy they are. <laughs> I mean, My Graves has to, has to do maybe a desperate play here. Yeah, I mean, Graves definitely need a miracle play. They, they can't play it safe. If they just play it safe, they're just gonna wait till they lose the game. They need to miracle play. They need to... They need to create a lot of chaos here. That is their win come. A lot, a lot of chaos. Blaze now, only now respawning, but he doesn't have teleport as he did go for the ignite. So, uh, they are, uh, they, it is at the moment a 4v4, but Corky will be there earlier, but I will give it up to you. Oh uh, yeah, but the fight has broken finally out here. Rain D also makes it into the fight. They say it's getting low, but also Volagin and Hondrix both out of this fight. Power also low on HP. Benjamin just zoning everyone out of this fight. But Blaze finds Elrat here. A good find in this dire situation. And this... Oh, wait, Randy? Where? Okay, top lane. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, are we getting for a flank play here? Oh, that would have been sick. But... Uh, I mean, it's uh, kills, two kills here for Eternal Blizzard, one kill for the back for the Grabbers, but it is the Drake, and that also now the sole point for Eternal Blizzard, which is putting Grabbers on even more of a clock. If Grabbers don't get the next Drake, I don't think there is really a way for them to come back into this. It was here a gorgeous night from Blaze uh, to at least get try to get something back. I think Blaze putting in a lot of work this game so far, doing a lot of damage. We see 5 3 and 0 having more than half the kills of his team. So he is doing a lot, but the question is, now that we slowly reach a late game, almost minute 20, uh, is it enough as a Zoe to do this? It's, it's, I feel like this damage is going to get slow, lesser and lesser, so we kind of peaks on two items. After that, she isn't really getting much stronger. While on the other hand, Corky is just going to do the same thing Zoe does with her max range Q with one auto attack after like three, four items. So I'm, I'm just worried that the, the gap is slowly getting get way too big for the grabbers to kind of find some way. They have they don't really have any hyper like scaling backup with the draft. They they just drafted okay. We need to fully snowball and then they sadly they they their early game plan didn't go as as planned. I would assume. But oh oh, but Isaac here getting almost caught, but his team comes to the rescue. El Rat making. Everyone stopping the tracks over here. Benjamin finding the ult onto Estelle and it's just, they're going down. Grabas are just lost just three members of the team. And I think Baron is just going away to the Eternal Blizzard here. Yeah, it was originally a good idea. Uh, trying to go for that nice pick on Jonathan Isaac. Uh, initially missing the bubble. Jonathan Isaac stepping back into it. Maybe on purpose to uh, go for like a little bait play to make them engage. But at this point, Grabbers was just way to ban gold, and even though Jonathan Isaac was the one that's being picked, even though it was Grabbers with the play and EB in the disadvantage, EB just slammed the wallet onto the face of the Grabbers. We're like, okay, I'm sleeping, but I'm gonna turn it into a manicure. ba -pum. And slamming the 100 bucks onto the table. So, uh, it's just really rough here for Grabbers at this point. It was a very nice uh, opportunity. EB seeing, okay, we're rich, let's just fight it. And it did work out. Now with Baron here into the pockets of Eternal Blizzard. Volagin did get the tower back on the other side of the map to at least trade something back, which is um, once again combined combined with the tour chat down. So it is a little bit of gold that you're happy for. But like mentioned before, it's getting very, very hard for the grubbers with the way this game is going. Yeah, I mean, having 6k gold deficit here with uh, no... <laughs> Uh, no late game for Grabas here. It's it's gonna be rough in in more more ways than one. As 
the Eternal Blizzard is also getting soul soon enough. So we're looking at an ocean soul into this uh, Orn, which, you know, I would especially love. The Orn just doesn't go down that way. Yeah. He, now he only needs Warmox, and it's just never gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> like the infinite healing. Like, who needs Warwick healing? Who needs Vladimir healing? You have Orn. Warmog is just expensive now, though. Yeah, but like... To be honest, I feel like EV is rich enough yeah, to, like, to afford be. it. Yeah, it had to be. But like, yeah, I mean, Warmog's was a bit broken. But at this no, point... No, 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 what do you mean? What do you mean? Every Nautilus is just rushing it and being a menace. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Yeah, it, it was a bit overtuned. Okay, but Reindy getting a little bit caught here, getting close and goes down. He gives, I think, a little bit of shutdown, like 550, I believe I saw. But I don't think it's enough to tip the scales just yet, as Eternal Blizzard are preparing to take that the tier 2 in mid lane. But now, Origin has made its way next to Benjamin over here, maybe... Doesn't have still ultimate, can't make a Q ult. And Hanjok's just making nothing work here? Oh. Yeah, he just has to back out, nobody's gonna die, or maybe he still goes down. It is a bit of a pickle here for Grabas as this fight is falling apart. Vol'jin fights Elrat and try gets actually the pick. Benjamin also going low, What it Isaac and Blaze fighting it out on the back line here. Everything is in shambles, and Grabas get aced. I just, I didn't know where to look in this fight. Yeah, it was a very confusing fight. It looked so good for Grabas. Like, I just saw, like, the fight started. I was like, okay, surely it's going to be a quick ace on the side from, he like, EB. And then I saw, like, okay, the EB moments are going low. Like, now we see this here. again. Yeah, also, of... like, I Isaac gets picked out, pretty much, from the fight. And everyone else just can't do anything about it <laughs> we, we can't follow up on anything just here just stands in the middle kills uh Walchen effectively instantly and i mean yeah the fight is in shambles <laughs> it's all it is the six i mean what is it now 8k gold difference is just that big yeah it's it's just wallet it's just they like yeah they're just running around with the full dri dripped out gucci outfits the versace <laughs> It's just, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's like really hard to say anything at this point. It's like a 10k gold lead, so, you know. It's not even misplaced. It's just nothing you can do. Yeah, I feel like, like, as, as horrible as the early game went for Grabber, since did a lot of mistakes, I feel like in the last 10 minutes, I genuinely think Grabber's played it better than EB. Mm -hmm. But EB just had so much more gold. It didn't really matter. But... Okay, now... The Grabas have to enter the pit as the last Drake is going down, but Blaze here trying to get stuff done. Volgin couldn't steal the last important Drake here. Blaze dies. Benjamin's ult gets cancelled, but he is not done. He has to find that Jin pick. No, no, mind. Jin is off the table from for now. Power makes his way out of this fight, but I don't think there is just there is no escaping from this ending. Yeah, I mean, Eternal Blizzard looking to just end the game here. Uh, they are knocking on Heaven's door. Oh, okay, wait. Okay, Randy getting <laughs> that uh, round two on the bot lane. This time he reigns victorious as he has that all that gold. And Volgin has to escape as well. Estala maybe does a bit damage, like 200 per out attack. But that is not going to help much in this fight. And... Benjamin is the one ending the game, interestingly enough. Okay, oh. Isaac getting a bit picked out, but the damage is not enough to end him off here. And Orn is still just hitting and hitting the Nexus. Still hitting. Oh, never mind, he quit now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is the just the end of the game. Uh. I love it out like 50s on the Nexus. It's just any second now. <laughs> any second. I mean, what a game one. I I honestly expected it to be more one-sided, as much as like it was quite one-sided. Yes, there was at the end the 10k gold lead for Eternal Blizzard, but Gravas did fight back quite well. Um, so like I think that's a like good sh uh, showing, like a good sign of life for the Gravas.
uh maybe that they do it a bit differently in the game too maybe they have a champion that can actually scale and don't try to bet it all in the first 10 minutes maybe the renekton isn't gonna get solo killed by the on in the first five minutes uh just these little things that they should change up and with the way this game one turned out i can genuinely see a world where grabbers take this game too even if it is not a likely world even if it is still hard Grabbers showed a lot of signs of life here in this game one, and I'm excited to see if they can take it back in the game two. I mean, yeah, it's just, this is a pretty much wake up call for Grabbers to make an actual draft <laughs> 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 because they did show they have the medal to face Eternal Blizzard here, but you know, six K gold difference is six K gold difference. <laughs> It's just, you, you can't fumble early that hard and also make just a little bit of a leeway in scaling as maybe you don't get the Renekton, but instead a Fiora or something. It just would make more sense. I mean, don't repeat draft overall, but, you know. Yeah. But if Gravas are going to change it up, if they are going to actually have a gra uh, draft, is something we're going to see in a second. Wait. Uh, is there a pause between game one and game two? Yeah, then we're gonna see us after a little break. I'm sorry, didn't a uh, lo long time since the last split, you know, bit bit washed, bit out of shape. So, see you all after a little break where we can see if Gravas are gonna take it back or not. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us, and love is all we'll ever trust, yeah. No, I don't want to waste what's left. And on and on we'll go, through the wastelands, through the highways, till my shadow turns to sun rays. And on
Okay, we're back with uh, with the Eternal Blizzards versus Scrubbers game two coming in soon enough, and Seth has just finally joined us as he was supposed to initially. Okay, okay, I feel like I have to explain everybody in the SLE here. I've been here for a while. If you know the SLE, you know I'm not late towards things. What happened behind the scenes was I was like, oh, great guys, I'll, I'll cast the game for you. Then they put me into a game without informing me but then they kind of did i don't know it shambles we're here for game two i'm here for game two and i'm excited to see what these players are going to play because to be honest i know eternal blizzards don't really know about the grubs team and you said that the last game was a little bit of an imp fest oh yeah of course um as most usually turn out to be anywho I mean, it's sle <laughs> isn't it i mean yeah. if there isn't an imp fest what do you want to do because the big thing about last season was we had a ton of like um, red colors around us. So instead of the orange you see, it was red. And I was like, yeah, that's the blood of the enemies or everybody of the SLE by how much fighting they do. I mean, you don't play for the win, you play for the crowd, right? So but you play for the ego, you know? Of you don't course. play these leagues, you're like, yeah, cool, I won the SLE, but how did you win it? Did you win it by making the enemy go 0 10? The answer is yes, you probably did it the right way. As the first pick, it's going to be that misfortune, the things you usually expect. MF very strong in lane. Bloodthirst that has been nerfed in the next patch, so we're not going to be seeing it for too much longer. Now we're going to have to see what the Grubs want to go into that. Personally, still think Sejuani is pretty strong, but I know that there are different AD characters you can pick into it. Trying to go for something a little bit more range. We have that Caitlyn. Maybe a Karma can go well with it. Try and, you know, outpoke the enemy and try and stop them from finding that major engage. Yeah, I mean, of course, uh, Caitlyn Karma would be a wonderful just here, but apparently they just are not bound by just simple aggression. They have to double down on this and get that bot lane going. MF just can't play this game and hopefully they can uh, overpower that Bloodthirster. I still feel like Rail could be a possibility here. Has some difficulties to get onto the Caitlyn, so maybe pivoting towards that Nautilus could be helpful. And I know we're not meant to talk about hovers, but I really hope that they at least think about this poppy pick. He has flexibility towards top mid, or sorry, top jungle and support. Mostly on the support role, Leona's super annoying when she gets on top of you with that E. Instead, Poppy can just steadfast presence it, make it sure that you can't engage onto that, and creates the space for the uh, MF. So really strong lane Eternal Blizzards adds here. Yeah, of course. Um, especially, like, the fact is that Poppy is so strong in all of those lanes makes him a terrifying pick. And now we'll see what EB has as their a possibly mid laner because they still don't want to reveal the flex and that Orianna does get indeed locked in. And Grubbers are just... I think they're going to answer with another mid lane, no? Yeah, 100% you could pick a mid laner here. I'm expecting a lot of neutralizing picks from the grub side the main reason for it is eternal blizzards have basically showed their whole hand right they're very much like we want team fights we want ways to engage so i'm expecting the grubs to maybe find ways to stop that engage from happening i think the vi could be very strong for eternal blizzards to maybe pick up later into the team corp or any sort of easy engage like that on so with the victor coming through who the hell wants to play victor into an mf plus a oriana in the mid lane i mean maybe he enjoys that I'm just, just getting killed repeatedly. Yeah, no, it, everyone has their own. But yeah, yeah. anyway, the Benjamin Orden is getting banned over here. Last game, he he absolutely destroyed the opposition. And this time, it is not being let through as, you know, Orden is still Orden at the end of the day, no matter whether he's behind or ahead. Glade ban comes around from Eternal Prisons and we see... A Lilia ban, which is interesting as Lilia wasn't even banned before or considered. Well, the main thing is, I'm not a massive fan of the Lilia ban, mostly because you have an AP mid laner. You don't want to have Lilia with another AP carry, mostly because then you could really item itemize against those two and feel pretty comfortable. So we're going to have to see what the grubs will be picking up to give themselves a little bit more defensive because they have a really good front to back team fighting form. Got the Caitlyn, the Victor for the backline, Leona to be that frontline engaged. So I would actually like more of a tank jungler here, like the Sejuani I said before. But instead, they are going to be picking the Nocturne. We're going to have to see if he can get something done early. As of course, the Oriana and Misfortune are very immobile as these carries. So if he ever gets on top of them, he can stay on them. Yeah, I mean, especially with Nocturne here, we see just a lot of jumping in, a lot of diving. Leona also getting that onto that. And we see Viego getting instantly locked in. No hesitation over here. 
just maybe trying to get also onto the action with the Poppy MF or Anna. And Eternal Blizzard just has this one lane of just going in. And there is, if we don't win this, we lose. If we win this, we win this. And I completely agree with you there. With the Nocturne, uh, having Viego on your team doesn't actually feel that bad because, of course, Nocturne has that shield, but he very much is only one thing, and that's to go in. So what Eternal Blizzards can do is let him come in, try to burst him out with that chill gaff or made with the Oriana ult, and then get the reset for your Viego to start the team fight off. So right now, it feels like Eternal Blizzards really has, well, has full control of this. There's anything the Grubs pick here, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it. Maybe they convert it to a 1-3-1 comp, get a really strong top laner. I know the Camille is very strong. If they need a little bit more AP, the Gwen is fine. Anything that just kind of deals with these bruisers is the best option here. Mm -hmm. And now we see the Gwen also set being hovered. Set was locked as Set can just throw the Joga into the enemy team, dealing tons of damage. And I like the pick. But I do think it maybe lacks just a little bit on the movement part. Yeah, there's a lot of close range champions on Eternal Blizzard, so Set should feel pretty comfortable in the major team fights. The only thing we have to be careful of is, of course, that chill gaff. Oh, if Set ever tries to go towards the back line, they can very much just CC him to death. As you, of course, you've got the Poppy to push him into the wall, you have the chill gaff with the knock up. It just feels like everything so far feels like Eternal Blizzard's way, but we'll have to see when we get ourselves into game because the way that Grubs can maybe make this game work is some level six shenanigans. You've got the Leona, you've got the Nocturne, Caitlyn has push in that bot lane, maybe push out mid as well, and maybe look for that four man dive. Yeah, I mean, Eternal Blizzard doesn't really mind losing the Grubs here as they have no real like split push potential anyway. Oriana maybe has just a little bit, but that's it. But Set would really love those Grubs, so... I do think we see Grubs instead going for the Grubs. Uh, <laughs> Eternal Blizzards are focusing down maybe more on the Dragons in the bot lane, as uh, MF Poppy would love to get that uh, early on lead. Yeah, we'd we'll definitely be able to help them out a lot if they were able to find those Void Grubs. So we're going to have to see if those Tower Plates will be quite effective on that side. As I don't even think the push pressure is that high from the Caitlyn to the MF, mostly because you have that Poppy that could create so much space for her. In these big team fights, remember Oriana Misfortune in those team fights. I don't feel like there's really anything that can match that amount of damage on the side of the Grubs team. By the way, what do we think of the Cho'Gath pick over here? Like, it's, it's mean, not a meta I'm a pick. Big, I'm always well, no. First of all, it's not a meta <laughs> pick, but mm -hmm. you always got to love a bit of the Cho'Gath because it does the major things you want from this team comp. Because when you look at Internal Blizzard, you're like, okay, we have enough damage from AD and AP. All we need is a major tank to sit in the front line and allow the rest of the team to do their job. And so even if the Grubs engage onto the chill gap, he can tank that all up and just let the rest of his team play around him. So it could have either been a chill gap, even a Scion. Orn could have been a possibility. That's why it got banned um, away. It's just a little bit lower than the Orn pick, but still very much pretty decent for what they need. Okay, I, I totally agree. I mean, it's just that I have played quite a bit of Cho'Gath in ranked recently. What, and you're a Cho'Gath been... fan? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, Cho'Gath feels amazing power-wise as well. Like, it, he simply, if he, if he hits a head, and it, you know, he will get the head because he has that much sustain from the passive, he will actually dominate, like, on one-on-one, almost anyone. I, I do think he has a decent chance of winning set in, on an island. 100%. He can definitely find something with the way that his team will play around him, but it's just really about can the team work around it, because this is still the new staff. The SLE has just got themselves back, so a lot of these teams are just brand new formed. So we're going to have to see if they can play together to get him those munching stacks, as you can only have the first six in lane or on any of those objectives. Afterwards, it has to be onto a character. Mm hmm Also... I do think Poppy here was, I mean, it is a flex pick, so, you know, they didn't really uh, have just a counter pick to pick here, but Poppy's W only getting the value out of Leona and Caitlyn is going to be harsh, I do think so. It's just like the, the idea of having Poppy here might seem neat, but I feel it was a bait. Well, I would agree with you if they did slam the set and Nocturne into it. 
So the big way you try and counter Poppy is by playing this long range comp. So a lot of the things you've been seeing recently is maybe a Corky in the mid lane, and then like a Caitlyn AD carry or even a Ziggs ADC. Stuff that can try and poke you out in the early game and then when it gets to late game, poke you out still because Poppy very much loves champions to like to dash around her or try to come into their face. And with the Grubs, they were very much going that way with the first three picks. But once the Nocturne came in, they practically said, hey, you know what? We want a team fight. So this Poppy pick could have been meh for them, but because of that pickup, it's still pretty good. Okay. Uh, what would be instead of Nocturne then? Brand? I mean, oh, no, Brand was Brand, no, man. I mean, you don't need any more AP damage. You've already got Victor towards the mid lane, so you're practically forced into an AD slot in towards the jungle. Plenty of options, but I still think a tank here would have been the best thing. Even a J4, if you wanted to have more team fighting, lock up that misfortune. But still, you've got the Sejuani. Even a Zac could have been better. You can play that front to back. As Nocturne doesn't have that play style, it's only go in and no, like, yeah, let's go in and then stay back a bit. It's just psych and jumps back out. <laughs> Imagine that. I mean, yeah, uh, I do agree. You are forced into an AD uh, jungler, but are there any ranged AD junglers? Give me a second. Come on, I mean, you got this, man. There's one. one there is one? one? Yeah, the old stick is known for it. Hmm. I'm blanking. Okay, starts with a K. Still blanking. <laughs> oh, wait, Kindred, yeah. I mean, Gidrid does have a dash, but, you know, it's still su such far away where that Poppy doesn't really do much against it. Also, if we want to talk about fun picks that I think should be picked more, Kindred is top tier level there. Because in the recent meta or things you see in the SLE, CWR, really any league, a lot of people like to have these major engaged compositions like the Nocturne you see here, like, you know, the Oriana plus the Misfortune. Imagine you just add on top of that, just the Lamb Dress fight. Nobody dies. Think about how much outplay potential you have there, and you can also carry with the champion. I think it's like that a lot of teams should think about picking up here. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, oh, I'm not that creative. It's actually killing me right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure out what you also will play on, on top lane, because like Set is lovely into Jogath in the ways of just team fighting, but considering the enemy team comp, Set just has no outlet as just you can't catch MF or Oriana for that matter. Well, would you like to know the pristine pick I always love to have in towards the top lane okay. to any tank? Enlighten me. E either a Fiora, all right? Uh -huh. Gwen could have even been better here, but mostly the Fiora and the Camille. The reason I love the Camille so much is it has an amazing matchup into the Cho'Gath, because Cho'Gath's damage is very burst heavy because he tries to deal the damage, then ult mm -hmm. you and try and burst you out. But Camille decides when the engages happen and has that 20% shield, negating a lot of the burst damage Cho'Gath wants to do. It's able to win the 1-3-1 one, one if they want to go for fights like that. Or even if they want to go for these team fights, you said the set can't get to the back line. Guess what? You just have them ult towards the back line, ult onto the MF or Oriana, burst them out, and then jump to safety. Yeah, I mean, but it's really rough playing Camille into Poppy in the team fights. I mean, yeah, exactly. That's why you don't play for the team fights into what you build because you have yeah. to take the lane. You have the Victor that can very safely scale on the side lane, have the Nocturne to help get the Camille ahead against the Shogath as you're imagining the Shogath in the late game who's super scary, has like two, 3,000 max health, unkillable. Well, by that time, Camille will have the true damage, but early on as well, only has about 1,000 HP. There's plenty of ways to outplay that or even look for these fights at level six with that Nocturne on. Makes sense. Makes sense. I, I mean, I, I would still maybe not shy away from having also Quen top lane as the second AP, as you know, Quen also does like half of it in true damage. So, you, I mean, also, yeah. it's, it's my bias of thinking that Quen is absolutely busted. Okay, let, let's talk about this. What's so good about the Gwen then? Gwen has insane amount of split uh, potential and also is, in fact, immune. I hate that part. That is the worst <laughs> part of it. Uh, one thing is, if you have uh, played Gwen into a Poppy, uh, especially support Poppy with Halo Blades, if you haven't got two items, you are getting one shot by them. But still, here for the second game, we see a quick ward coming out from the grub side towards this blue. We'll spot out where this jungler will be starting, so they will know where Viego is. Is they're actually gone for five point? Not going to be getting anything off this, but you know the fist bumps? 
Oh, uh, did they have four? They missed they one. <gasps> no. Who was it? It's doomed. I don't know, but it's doomed. Okay. Uh, it, it, I think I think it was the Cho Gaff. You know, top laners like to do their own thing, you know, trying to be cool as hell. And one thing, the, Eternal the, Blizzards, still a few names that I remember here. We still got Jesse J, still got Elrat. A lot of the players is now we get to see the fish bumps. Okay, that was four. Yeah, still four. Um anywho. Uh both junglers seem to be batting towards bot side, which makes sense as both bot, bot sides are really aggressive towards. Um but Anything else we might see on the runes or summoners that might intrigue us? Nothing too much. Conqueror is getting rampant at above this top side. Of course, Conqueror for set incredible in towards that Cho'Gath. Expect him to be winning out on plenty of those trades. Most importantly, Jonathan Isaac as well has gone for that Conqueror, meaning that he wants to go for more of these long extended fights. It does make sense when you have the tank supports as well, like Leona. And try and do as much damage as possible as he was actually spotted out by that ward earlier so everybody on the side of the grubs will be knowing where this viego started okay but what do, we, what do we think of hail of blades on poppy i mean it's just really good in this sort of matchup because you've got two versions of the poppy one hail of blades one of course the aftershock hail of blades very much more for that damage and the big concern I have is, is Poppy ever going to get on top of this Caitlyn except for that flash? So I really hope that he did actually go for that second runes where you get the secondary flash when it's down. Only because when you're on top of him, incredible burst damage, practically able to 1v1 any AD carry. But with that aftershock in these team fights, you can have a lot more tankiness for the team, which I kind of feel like he might need in this game. Oh yeah, especially like it's... If you get popped like right off the bat in the start of the fight, you know it's it's gonna be over quite soon enough. Um, so especially those uh, even one or two tank items will make a huge difference. Yeah, when you go for Hail of Blades, Poppy support, you usually like to go for one lethality item at the start and then opt yourself in towards that tank build. So you really want to look to get stuff rolling early on. And uh, the best player who actually plays this is going to be, of course, Mickey X on G2, somebody who brought it out at MSI this year. It was super fun to watch it in person when it was here in the UK. Oh, damn, you actually went to watch? Oh, but now Isaac just make his, making his way mid lane. Blaze getting a little bit caught here. Gets just out of it with a flash but not quite as the red buff finishes off isaac tries to get away here but Valagin is not done he wants to he wants the pick but he's just a little bit shy of the damage and gets nothing in return so that is just one zero for the of percent Shredman Rain played that really well, actually using the W at the end. But before that, we will be taking a replay of exactly what happened. So the play of rule is really smart from Eternal Blizzards, making sure you aren't spotted on the ward, you find that first engage. My big concern is Blaze should have just never flashed here. You're not ever able to get yourself out to safety. So now Jonathan and Isaac gets themselves to kill and now gets them out to safety. But look at what Shredman does, uses that W on okay, the board to get it. Okay. Uh, we roll into another just run straight to top and get a pick. I mean, isn't that the classic like top lane? I, I do have to say there was a ward down for that set and had that flash available. So kind of surprised I got a kill as Benjamin will be able to walk out to safety. His wave is in a little bit of an awkward spot. Should be able to freeze that from the grub side and forcing the teleport out of him. They can maybe look for a play afterwards on that. But so far, Eternal Blizzards have a really big lead. Almost got to 2000 gold and that's all on their jungler. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he has made already a huge impact, like five minutes into the game. Um, interestingly enough, Benjamin does not choose to teleport to the lane, and so he will be missing out on quite a few of these waves. But I mean, anyway, Isaac is just making waves here. It depends if Set is able to set up the trees here. It does look like he is going to be keeping it. So he has probably lost on about 10 CS. You can see that, which should be about 150 gold in that favor. But still, no level 6 available for anybody so far. I'm really looking to see if they want to make a play towards the bot side, especially with this Caitlyn down here. You can really see how well this Poppy has done on neutralizing this lane because Caitlyn's thing is all about getting these tower plates as mid lane. It's going to be okay. And the big thing about Caitlyn is she's had zero tower plates this game. So clearly this Poppy Elrat has done a fantastic job of stopping Estrella and HTM from being able to walk up or even looking for a fight. Yeah, I mean, 
also just the, the bot <coughs> I'm sorry. Um Enred is constantly just threatening over here with Caitlyn having just no space to get that pre farm going. Isaac is I'm sorry, uh Volgin is getting close to that botlin as well. Level five is threatening into that ultimate soon enough. Isaac goes for the grubs, so they trade the map and Benjamin comes to back up the grubs. So is Hunterkin a bad listen. position? Yeah, no way you ever go for a play. You just see, say hey guys, they're towards here. As when we look towards the bot side, because he's already on that dragon. I mean, if he doesn't have anything to reset for, no one else is here. He doesn't have time Yeah, I mean, he goes, he goes for it. Benjamin also makes his way, but c can he go for 2v1? No? No way, no way. He does have the I mean, I would. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. A bit of a madman play, especially in the SLE guy for something like that. People here, pretty good at the game, able to find those out plays, but really happy on the side of the grubs. Had full vision on everything that was happening top side. Made a play towards the bot lane as well. Got themselves that first dragon, but still, my big concern is this Caitlyn. Wait, what it's happened here? We're in the middle of the fight here, top side, and Benjamin still has his. Oh wait, he doesn't have his ultimate, so he can't finish it. And I think that. It's just the saving grace for Honda here. Yeah, and you're starting to see the big thing about Benjamin in this early game going for a little bit more of the AP earlier on. So he can just cue him, poke him out as much as possible, and then when he gets low enough, just give him the big chomp because Set wants these major fights. He wants to go for as long as possible with that Conqueror. But everything Benjamin's doing right now is saying, hell no, I'm here to poke you out. I'm making sure I get you low enough, and then I'm going to eat you. Because you can already see his eats already up, and he's looking for this play. Ooh, and there it is, the flash. I mean, it's just smart. Yeah, he, he was really eyeing that from the beginning. It was just a plan in the making for the last minute and a half, probably. <laughs> yeah, he was prepping the wave as much as possible, making sure that the enemy was having difficulties in him. Fortunately, when Set has got more items under his belt, that lane's going to feel a lot better. Okay, Vulcan just makes his way on to Isaac here, but there is just no follow-up from Blaze as he is poked a bit too much down from the mid-fights. Yeah, he's going to be able to find that play. Nocturne, once he gets a few more items under his belt yet again, he should feel a little bit more comfortable with his bot lane. Poppy, no W. I think it's just a small exchange, yeah. Yeah, it's so hard for Leona to play until they find that. Okay, Elred, wait, are we just suiciding now? And there goes the ultimate, but it does not matter as Elred goes down still and Caitlyn backs that 300 gold straight. I mean, it's just really hard to play, and I'm starting to disagree with this Halo Blade pick as mid lane get themselves out of safety and the reason i'm disagreeing with it poppy just has to neutralize everything leona and caitlin wants to do was mf will happily scan into the game once you get to that level six you can't stop this but now with them dying there's actually an opportunity for them to dive MF uh, it's, a, it's an ult here and the stun indeed comes in the dive opportunity was very realistic here and they still trade but the gold goes to elred's pocket which is not as favored uh compared to this estella 100% you're really taking that as the grub side because you're able to push them in got a double kill onto this Caitlyn and now he's only 20 CS behind compared to before it feels like they've really saved this game and with no flash or barrier up on Jesse J for another three or four minutes I do expect to maybe make a play with their jungle nocturne yes he doesn't have all up for another 30 seconds to a minute but once that back up i want a solar flare i want the nocturne ultimate on top of that to start really finding the leads as long as this game goes the more i am favoring eternal blizzards they have to keep the ball rolling i mean yeah eternal blizzards are looking really good into this match already they have 2k gold lead benjamin also <laughs> probably eyeballing that <laughs> another set kill over here um but certainly they do have the initiative right now um also thinking about which elred maybe took that kill to make his uh uh what's the rune called no it's to make yourself feel better that's right, it right i've made enough support <laughs> myself elred just smiled at him started laughing in the chat saying hey man guess whose kill this is that's mine he yeah, just need gold he, he, he goes at it he knows he can be mo way more aggressive with just a little bit more gold I mean, I would love to agree with you there, as we will be having maybe another fight here. HDM oh, power. No. Okay, but Wolgen is just making his way onto Elred, and 
Benjamin is also coming down. Both top players are trying to uh, just join the fight. Isaac has walked in, gets the first reset. He also gets Leona, which is insane in this fight. And Grubbers are just in shambles. Elred sends those two flying, even though they might have been a big potential. I don't know, but he might. And it's just over on this side. Caitlyn was able to roam up as well, making that a five versus four at the end. As Misfortune is getting so many tower plates towards the bot lane. And this game has just completely blown wide open. As at the start of this fight, they find a great pick on towards the Leona. And then now you just have to disengage on the sides of the grubs. But instead they look for a play. They try to find a kill and with a perfect two-man ultimate at the end from El Rat, that is a three for nothing towards that side and that's perfectly encapsulated in this gold lead already 5,000 up on that side so they're pretty confident with how this game is going absolutely it's just been a bit of a roller coaster so far but it is now securely going uh, on the eternal blizzard's favor um i mean grubbers try to just take a dragon right now but it's not happening as Eldred keeps his uh, watchful eye on it and just I mean, Grubbers have to find another outlet for their any kind of play, really. I mean, it's really difficult to say, because I would say your top lane should be winning by now. But Benjamin has been able to finish first item without even having to get armor boots or get himself a Thor mail, just showing how strong he has been in the solo lane. But they are walking around, have been spotted on vision here. I don't okay, think but Isaac good. also finds the stun, and with the uh say hold and we see this um i'm sorry her power going down elred makes another stun but volgin goes down here first interestingly enough uh Randy gets no one in her in his shockwave that's a bit surprising but anyway uh, another so sounding success for eternal blizzard over here and the big thing was i don't actually think they should have gone for that fight fortunately the enemies Kind of made a big mistake here, as right now it's a three versus three. Of course, uh, mid lane are coming down, making a four versus three. All they have to do is re engage onto one of the enemies, but they just let them walk around, play like they want to. And now, of course, with the numbers advantage, they're able to find another stun on towards the Caitlyn our top lane to give themselves the space to find that double kill. And when we're starting to see where the gold lead has ended up, you're already a first item completed on every member this eternal blizzard side and especially the jungler is already 2000 gold up as you can see nocton doesn't really have the damage yeah i mean especially when benjamin just can buy infinite amounts of armor right now and just deal with both set and nocturne in the same run it's gonna it be incredibly difficult to worry to take about down. this victor for at least another 10 minutes it can easily go for the ad you talked about as mm -hmm. mf i'm not sure you want to do this it's going to be able to get out to safety I had that vision in my head where you just have to okay, be well, on the Where are you? What is happening? Okay. And he was taken down in his own jungle. No safety, even close to home. Okay. I mean, this, this game just is absolutely dire for the grub side. They can't even get set to his own tower here. Yeah, he's going to get stunned over here. Eldred not made, just nope. letting him play the game. And indeed, grubbers are in quite of a pickle. I mean, you know when it's bad with your AD carriers 1v2ing while your puppies towards the top side in the enemy jungle. It's maybe mid lane that can make a play. And the flash is coming out and the ult now hits. Power gets another CC chain onto it. And Blaze gets hit with a shockwave but first gets Rain D down. And both Power and Blaze go down here. Okay, another Eldrat. Uh, incredible ult actually. Just gets another pick as well has been popping off yeah 15 and 3 this game is looking almost over with our playing around the map incredibly well with jonathan isaac as this team a lot of these players i do have some memories of and maybe they could be one of the favorites coming in towards this SLE season if i really think about Not it even maybe in the power rankings they were ranked entirely first so i mean I feel like this game really describes that because it's great and all saying, oh, guys, the grubs are doing well. I mean, they're trying, but they are very <laughs> much getting manhandled in the nicest way. Whether Cho'Gaf can just do this to a set, just just kind of run him down and eat him when he wants to. You, you know when you're not having the funnest time. Imagine winning set in a you're fist ready. fight. Oh, 
Man, you saw the animation. That wouldn't have been able to kill, but was pretty close to it. I want to just see Benjamin, 100 HP, just kill the set with the L. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, once he does maybe finish uh, into the late game, the what's the item called? Uh, that also gives you AP off of HP. Uh, come on. I mean, uh, all I'm thinking about is like Spit of Sarge or something. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I, well, I'm even our producer myself. can't figure out. So yeah, anyway, it, once once also uh, Benjamin gets just a little bit of AP and AD. I mean, sorry, uh, HP. He also gets just in two v one. Uh, just man handles both of the grubbers members here, doing quite a bit of the job. And do, does he get Leona? Does power go down here? No. No, uh, he's not able to hit that Q under towards the towers. He was actually going to die himself. Won't be able to finish off that kill. So now, with all these outer towers taken, except towards this top one, and Dragon Spawn in the next 1 minute 10, we will have to see how Eternal Blizzard will try and look to keep this pace accelerated. So the only big benefit the Grubs have is they go Global Ultima on this Nocturne, isn't up yet for another minute. They also have the Solar Flare from the Leona, and of course, great damage from the set. If they want to make a play somewhere and find a pickoff, that's really the only way. I'm seeing a plate into this game, but you've got players like Elvat who just have great vision around the map and just seem to constantly know where the enemy team is going to be. Yeah, no, it's just positioning himself really aggressively, trying to find another uh, engage onto literally anyone who walks into the bush as he can't instantly die either way. And now they're just finding that blaze pick and stun comes in. Do they have enough of damage? No, blaze Whoa. also walks out of the shockwave. With no consequence here. I mean, I think just uh, Eternal Blizzard used quite a bit of resources for nothing. I mean, does it really matter? I still feel like they are going to be able to win these team fights. Cho'Gaf is just so tanky. He can tank basically the full team for as long as he wants. Yeah, that poor people are walking towards Benjamin. Benjamin's like, okay, I have time. I have time. <laughs> Yeah, they do have full control of this. No ultimate available for the Oriana and for this Viego. So there is a small possibility if they can win the fight here. Okay, but they're going for it. And now Eternal Blizzard's turn to contest this dragon. Power is the first one getting the damage. Does he survive? He does not. Isaac does get the first reset off, but doesn't take the soul just yet. Maybe just skips it altogether as Volgin has just no way of getting into that pit and gives up the dragon. Yeah, there's nothing you could do against it. It's going to give the chomp over towards the Cho'Gaf game a little bit more HP. And Rift Hell Juice earlier should be able to pick up this mid lane tower, maybe even more. And at this point, Baron hasn't even spawned. And I say, I think they can take it. The whole way? But they get another hit. No, oh, no fun. It's going to go for the other tower instead. Okay. I mean, they go, did you go for the safe play? And I do respect that. Early on into the season, when you're not, you're not really entirely sure you can just relax yet. Uh, you, they can relax you? in this game, okay. if we're being honest. Okay, and now they just abuse the power. And they get another pick onto another pick. Benjamin facing off 2v1, not even breaking a sweat over here. Still... Oh, he doesn't have ultimate. He has it in about 10 seconds. He knows he has this power coming up. If he only cancels the backs now, I guess it doesn't really matter either way. It's just wasting as much time as possible. The only two members up were the ones on the bot lane for the grubs, which just allows Eternal Blizzard to walk up towards the mid lane, push out this way, get yourself into a pretty comfortable situation. And now they can decide they want to start this Baron or go for this top lane tower, as they will just be stealing away these camps. Is this gold lead? Yeah, we don't talk about it. Uh, yeah, it's just numbers on screen. They don't really matter. Man, I wish uh, my bank account was like that. <laughs> Man, just like a 10k up, please. Please, the UK, yeah. do, you wanna, do you wanna give us some subsidies or something? But yes, the side of the grubs are having a few difficulties and you can't really blame them, right? If you're going against the number one seed, clearly meant to be first place it's kind of a difficult show so i feel like even if grubs aren't in a comfortable situation here i'm excited to see this team maybe going against the team more of their caliber to say the team maybe towards middle of the pack maybe lower half might have a lot of a closer game because i don't feel like this one is able to show a good showing of what the grubs can do because they're a newly formed team team and then you're putting them against like a t1 or a gen g 
that's a bit of a bigger gap than I'd expect. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I do agree. It's really hard to do anything, especially when you might have this like uh, a fear of just losing right off the bat. If you look at look at the power rankings, you go, oh man, we're facing these guys. <laughs> it's it's gonna be a rough time either way. But now Blaze trying to make an escape, but Isaac is not letting letting that happen as he walks out of it all. Benjamin TP's in, and now. I think nothing is going to happen, interestingly enough. They just take yes. secure the uh, tier 2. Yeah, not going to be able to find anything off that back. Did try and go for the outplay, did try and go for that play, but isn't able to find more. Now Eternal Blizzards have full control over this Baron. Teleport will be available for Blaze when it comes up, so they might need another pick off. One thing I actually wouldn't mind a little bit more is having Benjamin on the side lane, get him to push it out a little bit more and just bring team members down towards him. As you saw beforehand, nobody can, can contest him as Eternal Blizzards will be starting up this battle. I mean, it's even rougher for Gubbers because right now, if Eternal Blizzard does this uh, baron, it is not even a flip when both teams are fully alive because you have this Joe Gats ultimate, which is, I believe, something around 1600 right now damage. Uh, like 400 over the smite how do you even win this flip i mean there's no way you can win the flip instead they will be opting to try and go through this ball wave but they have to get themselves out to safety and i don't think poppy's having any of that yeah benjamin and Endred are both ready for the escape um or like cutting, the cutting off the escape and they let it just happen i guess no, they don't actually care about stopping these resets. They're mostly about trying to get as much as they can before they finish them off, because they can get this mid lane here or two without any contestion. So Oriana TP towards the bot lane as well to make sure that those minions are barred up. So they can already take that tower and look for that second inhibitor. So even though they haven't got themselves a kill, they have played the macro almost phenomenally getting themselves in a position where only about a minute on this Baron that they've taken, they've already got an inhib and can look for the second. Yeah, I mean, they have just taken the uh, mid in now, uh, as it has opened a pressure uh, onto the map. Now Eternal Blizzard can just put Benjamin on top lane, possibly take that one tower because nobody can stop him anyway. And finally focus on that one dragon on the bottom side if they want to be safe. And which they have just showed that they, they do play quite safely. Yeah, Eternal Blizzards don't have a TP, so I expect this top wave to be completely left alone. And they just put all of their resources towards this dragon. The best way to do that is put this Oriana towards the bot lane, push out that wave, match it up with this mid wave as well, and then make sure that nobody's behind you. As you can see, decorating them like sheep, saying, hey, this is our objective, stay away from it, and we'll look for your bot lane tower in a second. Yeah, it's just no passing here. <laughs> Imagine just have to back off everything. It's just depressive as well. But what can you do? The gold lead is just that huge. There is this ult on Pyrologian onto... Uh, Onto Jesse, Jesse and he doesn't escape? No, uh, no, Set does the flash indeed and finally gets that big long weighted gold shutdown. But in turn, they give just too much to the enemy team and Blizzard takes over this game. And I do believe they end it right here as well. Yeah, they should be able to finish off the game here. I would say it was close, but not really as they're not looking for the end. Eldrad goes down with this ship. But it does not matter as towers are being taken, Nexus is being threatened, and Eternal Blizzard once again showcased that they did, in fact, belong onto those power rankings, onto the first spot. Yeah, when you finish a game with 27 and 5, you can be first place on the power rankings. Good mix, I can see if there's any team in the SLE that can do anything against these. We've got some SLE winners, got some people who have been in different leagues as well. So plenty of big names on this Eternal Blizzard side. So we're going to have to see if anybody can compete against them. As they had a pretty confident start. Yeah, of course, Eternal Blizzard did really have a really good run onto this match. But then again, Grubbers, I am, I'm not shying away of them taking like quite a decent spot uh, onto the league. They, they didn't exactly just like play terribly. It's just the enemies were better. 100%. Enemy team was more confident than that. But the big thing is, what can they improve for next time? Maybe having a little bit more of a solidified play style. I always think that a simple team fighting comp is always the best to go. 
So maybe in the next couple of games, we could see a little bit more like this. The Caitlyn seemed nice earlier on if they were able to find these tower plates, but they never really found a level six play with that Nocturne, never really found a big engage with the Leona as well. It just felt like every piece of the puzzle just wasn't really matching just yet. And that is the thing about new teams. They need that time to build, need that time to get into a better formation. Yeah, just be better. It's okay, the big way here. All right, cool. Well, yeah, guys, you know what? Just be better. You know? <laughs> just be better. Have you I ever mean, wanted to be good at League? You know, just think just think like you're good at the game and then you will be. Yeah, just gonna believe. Honestly, not That's even joking. Uh, not, not even joking. Like the self confidence in yourself does wonders. 100%. Now, I do not know if we're going to be having an interview or not. So, Peppa, are we? We are not. So, Google, I do believe that is going to be it for Eternal Blizzards versus Grubs. It was a little bit one-sided, we have to say, but I promise you that there are plenty of other games in the SLE, which will be, you know, decently close. So make sure that you stay around. Is there anything you want to say before we head off? I'm good. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody, for watching the SLE. Apologies for before not being in the first game. I will be having words with myself on that. But anyway, that is going to be it. Have a good day, and we'll see you later.